first of all, uh, thank RSLC for sponsoring this and, and for inviting me to be here with everyone. Um, really excited to be a part of this. So, so thank you so much and thanks for taking the time. Um, I'm Nicole Schlinger, the president of Campaign HQ, and uh, we, uh, we endeavor to be a trusted partner and an ally to help you deliver your message and to help you win. Um, and I wanted to start by showcasing two of the very lovely ladies who work in our Brooklyn call center. Um, you know, so often we talk a lot about phone calls and we don't really talk about the human beings behind it who make those calls. And you can see these these ladies are sweet and they are also very sassy. So um, at Campaign HQ, we do peer-to-peer uh, -peer text messaging. We do live calls, automated calls, and telephone town halls. And we've been doing that since 1999. Um, we aren't technology providers. What we are is message deliverers. You know, we're in aiming to help you have the right conversation with the right people at the right time. And right now, um, did that not advance? Um, right now, the one thing that we are seeing is that voters are either scared or they're mad. And how campaigns respond to that is really going to determine whether you win or lose in 2020. Um, how do you replace the personal connection you make going door to door because you can't do that? How do you answer voters' questions when all of your events are canceled? Um, and what we found is the candidates who figure out how to have a real two-way conversation with voters, not just where you talk, but where you also listen, they're the ones that are going to have a pretty major advantage over the campaigns that just try to blast information. And so uh, what I really want to talk about is different ways we've seen people doing that successfully. Um, the first is with telephone town halls. Um, this is a fantastic way to replace events and the voter forums that have been canceled. Um, you can reach hundreds or thousands of people by dialing out to a large universe of voters um, and also promoting your event, whether it's by text message like the one you see here or by social media or by email to get a large number of people to dial in, especially people who are mobile only because we only dial out primarily to landline phones. Um, the best events are the ones where you really let, you, let voters engage with you in an authentic way. You take real questions that aren't canned, you ask poll questions to get people's opinions, and you announce the results of those things. Um, and then after the event, you can post all of it or clips of it online and let even more people hear where you stand and that you're willing to engage with real voters. And so um, we've got uh, a little clip of one from last year that I'll share here. Yeah, let me just start with that. And, and that is, we've got just a few days until this election, an election where we have a unique opportunity to prevent an income tax in Texas. This is all about your pocketbook and your future. And I need your help to secure both of those. I need your help to make sure we turn the vote out this November. And then I need your help to make sure uh, we continue that process all the way through the election day so that uh, we elect, uh, re we reelect the president uh, and then we elect uh, people like uh, conservatives to the United States Senate all the way down to your local elections. So. And that was, uh, well, that's a very Texas heavy slide. That was Governor Greg Abbott. Uh, that was last October, about a week before the November 2019 elections. Um, and uh, really an election that was expected to be very low turnout. The only thing on the ballot for the most part were municipal races. And uh, at the same time, there was a statewide constitutional amendment to ban a personal income tax. So not only does Texas not have a state income tax, they wanted to permanently enshrine it in their constitution. Um, municipal elections really um, are strongholds for Democrat turnout. And so um, they had to find a way to reach people in 254 counties. Um, they called nearly a million Texas Republican voters and uh, they were able to increase their voter turnout in uh, by over 13% from the last off year election and, and be successful with that. Yeah, and I guess we're gonna see him twice. Um, so moving on to the next, um, next thing that we've seen people use really effectively. And this is something we're seeing people do right now, um, especially state legislative and local races that have June primaries. If you have a June primary, it is not going to be canceled. Absentee ballots are out there. And like I'll talk about in just a second, 
we have no idea who is going to vote in primaries right now. Um, and so um, I'll going to play this video. Um, this is uh, Mike Horahan. And in full disclosure, his son used to work for me. So this guy has a special place in my heart. Um, Mike made this video by himself on his iPhone sitting in front of his own fireplace. Um, and we texted it to every voter in Cedar County, Iowa, who has a cell phone. And what I love about this is this is a candidate who would never dream of doing broadcast TV, would never do cable TV, um, but he was able to send a video to voters and then have a personal one-on-one -on -one focus group with the people who responded. And even in this time of social distancing, he said he was, quote, mobbed when he went to the grocery store. So I hope he was mobbed at a six foot distance, but um, that was just a, a really neat thing. So let me just play this for you real quick. I'm Mike Horhan, running for Cedar County Board of Supervisors. I hope you are all safe. I'm currently a Chief of Police of West Branch and have over 40 years of public service experience. I support public safety, emergency services, strengthening our schools, local controlled property taxes, safe bridges and roads, and I support the farmer, Oprah Horhan, for supervisor. So, um, like I said, just a person running for county office who would never, never go on broadcast TV, never, never go on cable TV, actually was able to get a real TV commercial that he made himself at home onto the phones of voters who right now um, have their ballots in their hands. The Secretary of State mailed an absentee ballot request to every single voter in the state, regardless of their pre previous primary voting history. Um, a good example of someone who has literally no idea who's gonna vote in this primary because all the models, all of the predictions that we have from the past just simply don't apply right now. I'm Mike. Oh, we're going to see that again. Um, like I referenced earlier, one of the challenges we see candidates having right now is changes in absentee voting rules and behaviors are just dramatically going to change the makeup of the primary voting universe. Um, get out the vote is starting earlier, it's lasting longer, and it has to encompass and cover a much broader range of people. Um, vote by mail has been very focused on how and when to return the mail-in ballot correctly. Um, many states are looking at folks who have no history or tradition of voting by mail. They could return the ballot incorrectly. They may not know how to have it postmarked the right way. Um, and people who are scared to show up at the polls on election day, um, new voting locations, new voting hours, what are the safe practices? Uh, that's where we've really found people focusing. Um, so, you know, the campaigns who are going to change our strategy and adjust are going to do that by talking to people. And that's why live calls have been really effective and really critical for candidates that are using them right now. And again, it's not just your standard blast a message in your face. It's have a conversation, react and adjust, really listen to people and meet them where they are. And that's what we're seeing is, is effective right now. Um, text messaging, like we talked about, and automated calls. Um, and I know sometimes I say automated calls and people just groan. Um, automated calls are actually having a moment right now. We're seeing in some cases triple the answer rates we were seeing in January and February of this year. Um, and some folks, you know, I get the reaction of, this is 2020, what are you talking about with your robocalls? Um, the answer to that is if you do it right, if you do it right. Um, automated calls work best when you're communicating specifically with an audience to seniors with a message that's tailored to them. Um, like I have up on the screen here, 76% of voters age 65 and over still have and use a landline phone. And so uh, those aren't people you're likely going to reach with a text message. So um, they're the population that is also the most likely to continue to stay at home and to be concerned about making sure that their vote still counts. Uh, and so the important thing really is delivering a message that's actually worth hearing. Um, sometimes the problem isn't what the medium is, it's the message. Um, the message should be important, it should be valuable, and it should be delivered by someone in the community that seniors know and trust. And uh, so I actually have a great example of this. Um, Nick Freitas was, is a uh, Republican state senator in Virginia. Um, through a snafu in the voting procedures, he did not show up on the ballot and had to run as a write-in candidate. And uh, the uh, Board of Elections was heavily Democrat controlled. And he had to overcome just a number of hurdle, hurdles, one after another after another. And so the uh, 60 plus association used 
a very well-known, well-respected spokesman of theirs, Pat Boone, someone who is a hero and a heartthrob and an idol to people who are over the age of 60 and delivered a really effective message that I'll play for you. Hello, my friend, Pat Boone here. Yeah, that Pat Boone, the love record of the sand guy. And yes, I'm still singing at occasional concerts, but today, because of the importance of tomorrow's election there in Virginia, I'm calling to sing the praises of a highly respected member of the House of Delegates, Nick Freitas. I hope you know his name already, Nick Freitas. Because of a snafu in papers filed with the registrar's office, you may be asked to write in his name, and you'll have to spell it correctly. So, it's Nick, F-R-E-I-T-A-S. Let me tell you this, while he is a combat veteran, a Green Beret warrior, I can assure you his liberal opponents will challenge any misspelling of Nick's name. So, please do me, Pat Boone, Virginia, and of course, Nick, a favor. Be careful to spell it out, Nick. God bless you. God bless Virginia. Bless Nick Freitas. And God help our beloved country. Paid for by the 60 Plus Association and not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. 703-807-2070. Um, that, was, uh, that was the last slide I had. And uh, this is... Uh, um, this is our chief canine officer Waffles and she is looking over one of our texting agents making sure that she's doing her job fastidiously so I would be uh, I would be remiss if I didn't show that to you but um, really want to thank uh, RSLC for putting together this event thank you all for being here and uh, I can take questions now or I think we're, we actually I think we're going to do questions at the end so um, I'll stop sharing my screen and, and turn it back over to you. Thank you, Nicole. Um, thank you for sharing that stuff. I, I really hope you guys are, are picking up on, on the things that she's highlighting, especially when it comes to the benefit of teletown halls. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about Zoom and using um, FaceTime and Facebook Live and all these things. But I can tell you when it comes to um, something that you can easily measure um, and that you can collect the data and track it, uh, the teletown halls are definitely a great way to go.